what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we're doing again a dry hack me video and we're gonna focus on secure the security engineer track so we have reached the active directory hardening and it's gonna be the subject of this video so there are some discussed methods uh, and I say some because there are many methods to harden and secure active uh, directory meaning uh, Windows Server with Active Directory but here there are some methods that are discussed we're gonna go over these methods and we're gonna answer a couple of questions and try to make this as simple as I can and for my members I released a new uh, note file it is under the blue team track the blue team notes and the name is Windows Security we will be finding this in the uh, Google Drive notes all right so let's get back to the room so we have a machine to spawn i'm going to click on start the machine so basically the task two is about concepts on active directory so it's not a comprehensive uh, list or comprehensive uh, you know uh, it doesn't contain all everything about active directory but you know if you are going through active directory hardening you must know what is domain domain controller and the definition of trees and forests so we're going to talk about this but there is there are two questions here one question what is the root domain in the attached ad machine so basically here uh let's see yeah the machine is still uh starting so here we have tryhackme.ioc is the root domain and z8 or tryhackme it's not the subdomain uh, we co it's called it's called the child domain so both these domains um exists under uh, the same tree so we call this a tree because it contains more than one domain now the subject of this video will be on the securing authentication methods and the other tasks so let's first make sure that the machine is up and running going to click on split view okay so going to task three so in task three we have the LAN manager hash SMB signing LDAP signing password policies and rotation and some suggestions on password policies so these are settings that you can configure on your active directory to make sure that the authentication process is secure meaning uh, MIT attacks have little to no chance to succeed at the same time you configure strong password policy for uh, your users simultaneously in task 4 here they talk about the general security um, concepts here so for example the role-based access control the uh, methods of access control the principle of least privilege all of these are general security controls that you can um, apply to the Active Directory or Windows Server the Active Directory and here there are two questions so computers and printers must be added to tier 0 so here's about tiered access model now the tiered access model is not discussed in compute uh, in CompTIA Security Plus so here I'm preparing for you guys a note file to prepare for CompTIA Security Plus so here in CompTIA Security Plus there are certain models for access control oh my god many things about access control access control uh, methods models just too hard to find them mac okay as you can see guys in CompTIA security plus we discuss discretionary access control role based mandatory and there is the rule based access control as well if you scroll down you're gonna find it so maybe rule based access control so all of these access controls are used depending on the scenario or depending on organization so tiered access model groups your resources based on tiers for example as you can see tier 0 includes top level uh, resources such as admin accounts domain controller and groups so tier 1 applications and servers tier 2 
end user devices so the higher it goes the less sensitive it becomes so as you can see tier 0 it's the highest contains the highest sensitive resources such as admin accounts domain control and groups so here the question is computers and printers must be added to z tier 0 nope because computers and printers are endpoints so we can add them to tier 2 suppose a vendor arrives at your facility for a two-week duration visit task being a system administrator you should create a high privileged account for him nope because this goes to uh, the role based access control so in role based access control we assign people resources and permissions based on their uh, job and additionally we apply the principle of least privilege the meaning the least privilege means that if they don't need access to a certain resource we don't grant them that uh, permission to access that resource depending on your job description on your need as well okay so finally the machine started all right so we're going to demonstrate task three now all right so we're going to allow this and we're going to start with the gp edit the group policy editor most of the policies you configure in active directory whether to harden secure or even to set certain settings are done via the group policy editor so it's good practice if you uh, go over the policies here and understand what every single one of them the purpose of every, every single one of them so the first thing we're going to do is the lan hash manager so here we're going to make sure that windows stores the hashes for the user's password in the ntlm not the l the lm because the lm is relatively weaker than the nt right and it's vulnerable to brute force attacks so we make sure that the passwords or the hashes are stored uh in nt so we're gonna what we're gonna do here we're gonna go to computer configuration as you can see here and then we're gonna go to policies windows settings so in windows settings we're gonna expand this the machine is too slow frustration frustrating okay security settings can highlight this and expand to local policies and if we expand the local policies we go to security options and from security options here we have the security policies so as you can see there is one here that's about the uh, LAN manager let's see where it is So it starts with don't store. Let's see what it is. Yeah. This is the one. Properties. So now we're secure. Don't store LAN manager hash value on next password change. So by default, this is enabled, which is good. So make sure on your end, this is enabled because you don't want um, the password to be stored as LM hash because it's going to be susceptible to brute force attacks. It's going to be easily cracked. All right, that's the first thing to securing uh, or the, that's the first thing you can do to secure Active Directory. The other thing is SMB signing. So SMB, as you know, server message block is the protocol responsible for file and printer sharing. So if you have file sharing, printer sharing enabled, this protocol most probably is enabled. So the problem is the, ex the communications happen in clear text. So it's vulnerable to MITM attack. So in order to prevent this, we're going to need to configure some security policies. Again, we go to back to Windows settings and then to security settings, back to local policies, security options. And we're going to look for the digital sign, digitally signed communication. Let's see where it is. Digitally signed secure channel. Microsoft network. This is the one digitally signed communication properties and it is disabled so we're going to make sure this is enabled explain go to explain gonna, you, can, you can see more information about this digitally signed communications the security setting determines whether packet signing is required by the smb client component so you want to you want the communications through the smb to be signed and not vulnerable to mitm so you need to or therefore you need to enable this all right 
Another thing to securing uh, protocols in uh, Active Directory is the LDAP protocol. So LDAP is the main protocol Active Directory is based on. It's the light, lightweight directory access protocol. So also you want to pre-secure the communications based on that protocol for MITM attacks. So what we're going to do, we're going to need also to enable the signing of these communications. So on the same uh, pane here, we're going to need to find domain controller section. And then we're going to need to look for LDAP server channel binding tokens. Yeah, LDAP server signing requirements. So modifying the setting may affect compatibility with the clients. So here it doesn't allow me to enable it for some reason related to this explanation, but usually this needs to be enabled. And to the most important part is of this video is the password policies. So password policies can be configured from the oh we're going to go back to security settings and we're going to check on account policies. So account policy there is account there is password policy here. And for me you can configure the minimum uh, and maximum length of the password, the complexity, the age, so on and so forth. For example, as you can see here, the min maximum age of the password is 42 days, which means after 42 days, your users will be prompted to change their password. That's the maximum age and that's the minimum age. Minimum age is one, meaning you cannot change your password uh, during the first day of the assignment. And you have minimum password length, the seven characters. So these are the uh, some settings you can see. And the task, there are some questions to answer. So we scroll down. Change the, yeah, what is the default minimum password length? It was seven, as you can see here. Going back, showing it one more time to you guys. So seven characters. All right. So these are, these are some policies that you can enable to harden your Active Directory or to maybe secure the authentication. So additionally, there is in task five, there is this nice new tool that I haven't heard before. It is a Microsoft Security Compliance Toolkit. So this tool, let's go to the relative folder scripts. Open that. Okay. Opening the link of the tool. So if you download this tool, it will give you recommendations and give you ready templates so that you download them and configure your Active Directory. If you don't know what to, what to do, and what policies to configure, you can uh, download this tool and retrieve ready templates to configure. For example, on group policy, there are already ready-made um, uh, configurations. For example, here, Windows Server 2019 security baseline downloaded from the tool itself. So to illustrate further, <coughs> in the figures here, as you can see, when you run this tool, it gives you the templates. Now here, Windows Server 2022 security baseline zip. This is a zip file and it was downloaded to this machine. And once downloaded, you can see the relative folder. If you open it and go to local scripts, you can see the partial script that if you um, run, it will configure uh, the uh, configurations set on this baseline. So the baseline, it's actually collection and combination of configurations that makes sure your Windows Server is secure based on a specific baseline, right? And you can use this as a start if you don't know what to do. Additionally, there is the policy analyzer. Again, guys, these are uh, can be downloaded by running the tool on your machine and then selecting the configuration you want to download. It will be downloaded in zip file and you can extract and see it this way. So policy analyzer analyzes the group policy settings in your environment, okay? And as you can see here, you know, the demonstrations. So if you go back here to policy analyzer, you can see these are the uh, scripts that if you run, will configure your group policy based on the settings. Let's go over one of them. So if you go back to Windows Server, security baseline and check the GPOs so as you can see 
these GPUs can be directly imported to your group policy editor based on the machine and the user. If you open this in XML format, hopefully it's going to open. <laughs> yeah. See, guys, these are the configurations. Now, the best thing to do is to import them to your security or to the, the, the uh, group policy editor. LGPO. As you can see, there's an executable file. All right, so on the task here, there is find and open baseline local and install script and find the flag. Let's go here and see where is that script. Local script and there is baseline local and install. Let's open this and see what it does. Okay, so the description says applies a Windows security configuration baseline to a local group policy. Execute the script with one of these required command line switches to install the corresponding page line. So here you specify you execute this either on a domain controller or in a domain joint machine. Requirements, partial execution policy, domain joint machine, and this is the flag. So as you can see guys, these are a set of configurations that will be applied on any domain or any computer you apply it to. And it will configure the group policy based on the mentioned configurations here. Okay. The other question. Find an open merge policy rule script imported from policy analyzer in partial editor. So back to policy analyzer, you can check the scripts, merge policy. Let's take a look at the uh, script here, what it does. So merge policy analyzer, policy files, what? Merge policy analyzer, policy rules files into one policy rule set written into the pipeline. So one of the things that policy analyzer does is that it, 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 it gets rid of redundant uh, policies configured in GPO and if you scroll down as you can see this is the flag uh, other questions we have to ask so he, these are the common attacks against Active Directory we have discussed many rooms on Active Directory penetration testing you can get back to them guys and see how uh, attacks are conducted against these kind of environments so does curb roasting utilize an offline attack scheme for a cracking encrypted passwords? We explained previously guys about curb roasting. I'm just going to go through this again. And the answer is yes, it's offline because at the end you, 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 will, you take the ticket and you crack it offline. As per the generated report, how many users have the same password as Aaron Booth? So for you guys who are asking where is the report, the report is here. If you go to the image here, you click on it. And see this is the report these are the usernames who, who, who have the same password as you can see Aaron.Booth. the number of accounts with the same password is 186 and lastly this is cheat sheet from try hack me you can download it to uh, take a look at more details on active directory hardening so that was it guys i hope you enjoyed the video and definitely i'm gonna see you later to complete this track